Is everything? Everything's fine. Thank you. On July 22nd, 1994, Sharon Chaffetz joined her husband Stephen for a late dinner at a Long Island restaurant. After many years of marriage, they were looking forward to their daughter's wedding just two weeks away. Suddenly, the window near Stephen's head shattered and he slumped to the floor. The restaurant owner quickly called for help. Suffolk County, New York police and paramedics responded to the call within minutes. But it was too late. Stephen Chaffetz was dead from a single gunshot wound to the chest. No one in the restaurant had seen the shooter. Police processed the crime scene for clues. The trajectory of the bullet suggested that someone had fired a high-powered rifle in the restaurant from an area across the street. No one knew whether the shooting was random or if Chaffetz had been targeted for murder. Lieutenant John Girash of the Suffolk County Police Department led the investigation. He started by looking into the victim's background. In most homicide investigations, one of the first things that detectives do is to try to learn as much as they can about the victim. Most often, uh, the motive lies in, within the, the life of the victim and what's going on uh, with him. Investigators spoke with the victim's family and friends. He had any contact with any other Stephen Chaffetz, a practicing attorney and a CPA, was highly regarded in the community. According to those close to him, he had no enemies. Investigators were perplexed. Why would someone want to kill Stephen Chaffetz? At autopsy, the coroner recovered a 35 caliber bullet a type most commonly used in high-powered rifles. It was sent to the ballistics lab for further testing. Four days later, 23-year-old Andy Gomez was working his shift inside the cashier's booth at a nearby gas station. Without warning, a single shot rang out. The booth's window was double insulated and bulletproof. Gomez was lucky to be alive. Within minutes, police secured the area. They found no trace of the shooter. Gomez had little information to offer police. There had been no attempted robbery, and he didn't see anyone prior to the shooting. The bullet, which fragmented upon impact with the bulletproof glass, was all the shooter left behind. Police collected the fragments and sent them to the lab. The MO for both attacks was identical. Police hoped ballistics analysis could tell them more. After noting the similarities between the two shootings, investigators working the Chaffetz murder shifted their focus. The investigation became more complicated because it, it was obvious to us that the motive did, had very little to do, if anything, to do with the two individuals. Rather, these were now appearing to be random acts. And it's those kinds of random acts that make these kinds of investigation most difficult. The metal fragments from the gas station were sent to the Suffolk County Crime Lab. Although they were too small to compare to the bullet recovered from the body of Stephen Chaffetz, scientists were able to determine their metallic content a visual inspection under a microscope revealed the bullets shared a common coloration. The fragments from the gas station and the bullet that killed Chaffetz both had copper jackets. It was the first small step in linking the two shootings.